two, three. Hello and warm welcome. My name is Nicole Ines Hanisch. I'm from Berlin and I'm very happy to talk about Chiron today. And it's very strong but silent influence in our year 21. And as we all know, we have a very challenging square of Saturn and Uranus the whole year long. But at the same time, we have this uh, beneficial sextile between Saturn and Chiron the whole year long. And it's a very deep um, healing process for not only our own personal evolution, but for the whole world community. And if we really go deeper in the, um, in the transits all the three of them have done in the last 50, 60 years and what they're doing now, it's really an amazing process and insights to realize what is happening and why it's happening and what for and how we can reflect on our evolution at this certain difficult um, time we are in. And then to trust more in the healing evolutionary awakening which is maybe not looking as we want it to be, but it's still happening on a very strong and but silent way concerning Chiron. So um, I don't wanna go too much deeper in the, in the mythology today, um, but more in the, in the aspects or in, the, in what does it mean in, the, in our solar system? Where is Chiron? What does it mean for our evolutionary process? moving to the higher from the personal to our higher being and Chiron is known as a bridge and it's a small asteroid moving between um, the orbits from Saturn and Uranus and it's a very elliptical orbit it has which makes a very different um, time in, in his transits a very interesting time pattern in his transits and um, but um, let, let us check first now these orbits. So, be, but before we enter deeper in the meaning of them or the three of them or Chiron, it's important that all of them always move around the sun. So to understand what the meaning of them is, is to always connect them to the sun. Where are they? Where are they? Um, around the sun and what does it mean for our evolution. Of course, here we are on Earth and astrology is like Earth-centered, but still this is the solar system and this is what we are um, looking at. So if we have now here the orbits and here's the Jupiter orbit and the Saturn orbit and then Chiron moves here. So it's sometimes in between the Saturn orbit and sometimes outside of the Uranian orbit. And this is really interesting because it's known as the bridge between Saturn and Uranus because it moves here, but it's still for me the bridge between Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus and Neptune because it's always, you know, it's the next step, the step inwards towards Jupiter and the step outwards to Neptune. So it's even a, a wider bridge than we usually see it. And um, so I, I love this graph, which is from Jeff also, uh, because it really makes the, the idea of Chiron and what he's bridging wider. And uh, I will get later back about what, what I mean with this bridge. Um, if we look from the sun, the distance from Uranus to the sun is the, the double distance than Saturn to the sun. So it's a really a huge step into the universe. And the Saturn is the last planet we can see with our personal eyes. So the really like our personal um, experiences, although it's like more a social planet or, you know, it has to do with the, our social structures, but we really take things personal coming to Saturn. And Uranus is so much far out, we can't see him with our person. We can't see him. And uh, I really like this astronic, astronomical, astronomical, sorry about my English, um, this fundamental um, 
realities in our solar system and, and how deep we can understand of the meaning. So actually there is no picture of Chiron. He's not interesting enough for science to picture him. Um, and this again means there's like this step in the nothingness, the step in what we cannot grasp and we cannot realize and what we cannot see. But um, to repeat this, it's not only the bridge between Saturn and Uranus, because it's orbiting in between Uranus, uh, Saturn and Jupiter and orbiting in between, although it's very close to Uranus, but still in between Neptune, it's really bridging our social um, structures given by society and our higher structures with what we're heeding for being a soul. So, um, and in 2021, as I said, they do this very, all the three of them, Saturn, Uranus, and Chiron, do this very rare and um, very amazing constellation. So if we come to um, Saturn and Uranus, and first we want to check um, the process they are in with their, um, with their square, I want to first emphasize the evolutionary aspect they are in. In, in evolutionary astrology, we know that we, you know, the whole cycle from the signs, but the aspects too, are as a whole one, an evolutionary circle. But as we have the starting point here as a, in Aries, we have the, you know, the, the highest point here in Libra, and then it gets back again. So we have involution, we really have to like involve in or like incarnate in the earth, incarnate in our processes, really like get into our life. And then up from a certain point, we get have to get out and we have to let go and we have to get back to our source and then start over again because it's ongoing process. And so to check the aspects in this um, meaning, uh, you can really find a lot of insights what they mean. So um, there is a whole video on the evolutionary astrology video channel about this. So just to give this a short um, thing. So the involutionary aspects are the increasing angles and the devolutionary aspects are the decreasing angles. So we know that Saturn right now stands is an um, Aquarius and Uranus is in Taurus. So Saturn, the faster moving planet is moving towards Uranus. So this is why it's a decreasing angle. And uh, the same is a decreasing sextile between Chiron and Saturn. So Chiron um, is here in Aries. So the decreasing sextile, the Saturn is moving towards uh, the faster moving planets towards Chiron. So it's, it's the same time decreasing. So we are concerning the three of them in a decreasing, in a devolutionary process, which means that we really have to let go. And the, the square has um, a Capricorn energy. It is known as the most difficult aspect we can have. And of course, especially between like these opponent powers of Saturn and Uranus, the tension really gets strong because they really like go in different directions. And the square really means that um, you did it all somehow, you did almost the whole circle and you have to let go. Like if you have a profession, if you have a knowledge about something, if you have built up a relationship or whatever, we hate to let go. You know, we want to have it like in the state that we know it, that we control it. We, we hate this process. And the square, the decreasing square is known as the crisis of consciousness. We have to let go of our mindset. We have to let go of all what we know, all what we um, not experienced, but what we had re have reached so far. This is why it's such an, you know, difficult steering. And um, I don't know whether you have sailed in really rough water and storm. This is what the decreasing um, 
um, square means for me. You have to really hold on to your steer, but you, at the same time, you have no control. You don't know where the wind, the weather, the waves will go. You, you just have to steer. You know, it's a crisis in consciousness. You have to take control, but still give up all the control. And this is uh, in itself, this contradictionary um, tension, which is our evolutionary step. It's an evolutionary turning point. Everybody is in, society is in, countries are in, unions are in, all the structures have been built up are in this evolutionary turning point. So no wonder how, uh, why there is so much tension around. Um, these are the aspects from this year. And I, uh, I know that I have the European chart system, so the symbols are a little bit different. I didn't thought to ask Linda to give me the uh, American ones. So this is the symbol for Saturn. This is the symbol for Uranus. So they do the square. They do it three times in, um, in this year. And, um, um, and then we have the sextile. Um, between Saturn and Chiron here and it's happening. But from the orbit and from the, um, the influence, it's both of them are there the whole year. You can really say this, there's like no, mon no escape month or uh, no time where, uh, we, where we, 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 in all the whole months, we have the chance to really develop in this tension and in this healing process. Um, so to understand the bridge function between the Saturn and Uranus, let us give a short look of their topics. Um, and again, not in the mythology, but more in the structures, what they um, mean for us in our life. And of course, Saturn confronts us with the past, with our boundaries, with our duties, and it's the chronicle problem, the chronos, the chronicle problem we, you know, we dwell on and we have it again and we can work on Saturn. And as we work on, we get mature and we have this um, build it up structure, <clears throat> structures in ourselves by karma, by society, by the parents. <clears throat> and then of course we have always this topic with guilt or blame and defense and restrictions. So it's not like this easy <clears throat> planet. It's really the one we have to deal with. But with a lot of work and um, effort, we can really mature on this structure. And Uranus, he's totally different. I mean, if Saturn is the god of karma, Uranus does not believe in karma. He only knows that we are already free. This is why the teachers, the gurus say, you're already free, you know? And if we are in a certain state of Uranian consciousness, then we can only laugh about ourselves, about our stupidness, structures, about our limitations, but it's still, both realities exist. So now here we have the future. We have the total different energy of, of, of possibilities. And it's always the unexpected. And if the Saturn is the archetype of the Eremit being alone, this is the networking. This is being all together. And, and um, it's really about progress, about group awareness. And it's if Saturn sets boundaries, Uranus breaks them. When Saturn is destiny, Uranus is free. And here's the connection to our higher aspect of ourself or the first connections. He is beyond our history and story. He is free. So, um, but for this huge step in our solar system, which means our own um, evolution and development, we need that bridge function. So, but let us get deeper to what does it mean evolutionary for ourselves on our evolutionary uh, development. So, of course, then here we have the mastership. We have to master this chronicle problems. We have to master our story. We have to take, we have to take responsibility and, and to like move from drama to dharma to really create life, to make the best out of it. 
And we know that if we've done the work with Saturn, it brings us an, uh, um, an inner freedom, which no other planet brings because we really know we worked for. And on the other side, we have this awakening process with Uranus. It's really moving towards higher consciousness, breaking the rules, um, looking from a different perspective and getting this humor in. Uranus can be very hura uh, hu humorous. So, um, but from the Saturn to, from the, from the restriction to Saturn, or to master our restrictions, to get free, we have to work. And this is the Saturn process, um, which is, it's, it's not giving easily. Again, from the Uranian perspective, there's only ease, <laughs> you know, but the Saturn asks this um, again and again. So, um, and if we have a, unsecure or a personal structure or infantile um, um, restrictions, then Uranus is not free either. So the Uranian status of consciousness is absolutely dependent on our Saturn work. Uh, because if we don't work on them, then Uranus is not easy to take either. And if we see now our social development right now, this is what we all experience. And this is a mirror of ourselves as a collective um, being, as if I see a humankind as a collective being of many, 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 many people. So what we experience is the unpredictable and necessary and difficult unstoppable change and upheaval of the existing systems through radical revolution and also violent transformation of state and wounded society. And of course, these are all words from Saturn and Uranus and it's all a mixture, but we are at this point because, or, or better to say our society, our countries, our whole world community is at this point because we are in this point. From the higher perspective, there is only one. So it's a very difficult and um, quite harsh mirror what is ex uh, happening outside. Um, so, and what's, if we have this Saturn um, rejected in us, if we blame others, if we have this, you know, um, resistance on our own mastership, even if it's unconscious, if we suppress these things, then Uranus leads to anarchy, to chaos, to madness or to dissociation. And this is a very unhealthy development what we can see in the world so much. So if we're immature, Uranus will show us an immature revolution, an immature awakening. Um, so, and this, to, to, to really heal this huge step or this difficult step between the two, we have this um, rainbow bridge or, or uh, this wounded healer Chiron. Um, if we are honest, often if we push for a new process, it's because out of defense or resistance against the old. So it's not only that the new is because it's new, but because we offend, defend something we don't like anymore. And so we, we cannot cheat ourselves on this. We always have to go to the spiritual, we come back to what is bounding us in space and time. Our longing for, for the celestial dimension or for the soul dimension is very strong, but we still have to go the way step by step. And, um, and if we grow on age, if we get older, then we can have the youth of Uranus. We cannot have it as a young person. Although we have the archetypes of all persons in Saturn and 
um, young persons in Uranus, in, in Uranus, but still the, the really youth comes by growing and maturing um, to, to be free. So, um, again, we have this extraordinary constellation with Chiron this year, and it is silent, but very, very strong because it's the sixth tile. And um, in the book of Barbara Klo, who wrote a wonderful book about Chiron, she wrote that the sextile of Chiron is the most complete um, aspect Chiron can have, this increasing, um, de sorry, decreasing sextile. It's a, it's a really, because it's the end of the cycle, it's the last main aspect, and it's uh, the, the, the process is complete. And this is what Chiron is about too, to give in. The key function for Chiron is acceptance. And it's, it's like a little, it's, it's like a sharp knife you walk on because acceptance doesn't mean giving up. If you give up, you come to the Rome, to the, fi uh, to the field of Saturn again. It's about failing. It's about, I can't do anything about it. So, you know, I don't care. But this is not the Chiron acceptance. The radical acceptance, a step into the nothingness. I don't know, I'm not able to change it. As much therapy I did, as much gurus I searched for, as much, as much meditation, as much I learned, as much I realized, I keep on coming back to my things. And I keep on being in this wounded process that I don't know that I, that I yeah, that I'm a human being actually. <laughs> Although I know I'm a soul being as well. And this is a really deep process of, of uh, devotion. So where we, there we have the bridge again through in Neptune's direction and of humbleness. Um, so the, the Chiron aspect really means to accept our wound. And it reminds me a little bit on this fairy tale being this naked emperor in front of the mirror. If you really um, um, how I say it, give in into your wounds, if you really like show them to yourselves or to good friends or even to people who betray you, then you get like naked. You have to tear everything off. Then you stand there, you have nothing. And this is a very wound, but very healing process because you have nothing to lose but liberation. Every dark spark of you, every dark corner, every thing what you would like to deny, to push away, to, to get over, you have to accept that it's there. And defense can be a very subtle process. You pretend you're not defending. <laughs> you pretend, yeah, I accepted it, but it, it, is, it is a long, lifelong journey. It's never ending process to walk over this bridge and bridge again. Um, so to really transform, we have to move from this beast in us to the higher mind, but not with overcoming the beast, but being this. And often the beast doesn't appear in ourselves. It appears outside, either from people or systems, states, structures, viruses, you know, it's always something others we can blame. It's always there that it's not, if this would not be there, you know, I would be free. But this is this merciless mirror, especially what we have in the collective. If we really get this knowledge in that there's only one, which is the Neptunian truth, um, then there, everything what happens in society is us. The corruption, the lies, the fake news, the, all these things, even if I don't, even if I would like never lied in my life, <laughs> which nobody, you know, no, human person is maybe capable of it to never lie. But even, yes, I never lied. Still, that you are capable of lying makes you being that one other person 
who, who lies maybe to you. So this year, in this process of the square between Uranus and Saturn and this decreasing to this letting go crisis of consciousness process, we have, oh no, life confronts us with our wounds. This is what is happening. Society does, the whole world situation does. And there's no escape way. And it's not moving to the better and it's not moving to the um, more negative, it's moving towards evolution, towards a collective awakening process because we have to learn to be humble every day. It's, um, it's a humbling process to have a mask and to go to the supermarket, to the grocery store. We have to give in. And this is like this year of 2021 gives us like a magical drink because we have to accept so many things all the time, which we don't like, which we would like to resist, but resistance doesn't, no, brings us any further. So, and this is true for all of us in all countries. And this is so amazing. So we keep on seeing this process as a difficult process, but we lose the insight that this is a healing process of a collective humbleness, of a collective acceptance day by day, month by month, more than a year now and going on. And we have no um, future to grasp on. We all know, like again, the whole collective, you know, all pe many people know the old life is gone, Saturn is gone. The old life is not going to be there anymore. The structure, we cannot, you know, rebuild it. And the new structures are not to grasp. This is true always, but with this constellation, this is emphasized this process. It's really the light, the spotlight is on this process that um, the, the situation for our future is so unpredictable. And not to forget all the climate situation, which is you know, much bigger than the situation we are in here, but this is now giving us the humbleness and the acceptance. This is the climate constellation, uh, the climate situation is too far away to, to force us into this process. The virus came so near to, um, yeah, to accept too that this organism super Gaia we are on has bigger and other plans than, than we have. So we are torn between our old life and our future and we just don't know. And this is called in the psychology, um, the battle of the threshold. And it's a, it's a very difficult battle inside, but the battle makes us drink this magical drink of Chiron, this acceptance and this humble awareness that we cannot control and that the that there is a higher dimension of life. And again, imagine many, many people and most of them unconsciously realize this higher dimension of life because if we have our habits of normal life, this does not happen, this process. But this whole life uh, world situation forces on us in as a collective. So, uh, of course, we cannot only see the Chiron process or Uranus and Saturn. It's always the, the whole picture. Of course, we have this Pluto and Capricorn, which are forcing our structures to collapse, but at the same time, give, give the systems the scrap to power, to control the, to control the rules, to make you know, the, um, the limitations, to, to um, control the, um, how the word is, uh, the public is not the right word. It's folk. Uh, I get it later. Um, so this grab of power of the system is difficult. Uh, we, we see it all over. Um, but at the same time, we see too, this really new impulse that women all over the world will play a different role in our evolution in the future. Although this situation, again, this Chiron process is like a withdrawal because of the motherhood, because mothers have to stay at home, they have to take, take care of children. Like in Africa, in Asia, they cannot go to school. Um, like it has been in the last years um, on the, you know, in the very revolutionary way, women are in, in um, 
in learning and, and learning on their own rights. So this Pluto and Capricorn squares Aries really shows us this new role of a, of a um, um, rising up very strong feminine power. And it's not like a nice feminine power, it's very angry and, and um, um, Oh, I'm missing words. I, I just skip it sometimes then I'm blind, I'm, I have a blank. So, and then what we do have to experience with this process, with this bridge for the higher is this uh, millions, billions of people are suffering because of the situation. And this is the Neptune and Piscean energy um, and the powerlessness and all this fake news, the fog, we don't know what's true. We don't know what lies are told us. We don't, we can, all those conspiracies and then the fake news and the, the news we're reading and we don't know what is true. And this is again, uh, the, the deep process of learning to let go of what we know. The deep process in our brains of evolutionary letting go of what we know. And complain is resistance. Complain is Saturn. Complain holds the old brain um, there, but this is making uh, making stress. So better let go. Our securities are breaking apart. This is the next step. And then we're still trapped with this with this virus and the whole urine and Taurus energy. Um, the mutations are coming. We don't know what the vaccines, how they how it will be. How many of them we will we'll need in the next years? How we don't know. And this is again to, to understand this is the process we are in. The step in the unknown, the step in the nothingness, the step in the, in the uh, giving up control, much, much more than since our lifetime as a collective, we had to do it. Um, because we are. Um, globalized as in, in a way we have not been before. So, and in this process, realize that you're drinking this Chiron magical drink, all of us every single day. And it's open up, this opens up to a higher consciousness. Um, okay. So let me get to some details from, from numbers and to some good news. <laughs> Um, I checked the aspects of Uranus and Chiron and Saturn in, in the last, uh, from 1951, and it's really amazing because I didn't really realize this before. We had a Chiron-Uranus opposition starting in 1951, and it went on till 1990. So these are 37 years, which is amazing. You will see it in the next slide. So it started here, um, Chiron and Uranus and Capricorn and, and um, Cancer, they had their opposition in 1951. And then it went on and it moved to the science, it moved to the science, it moved enough, you know, more. And um, the last opposition, the last exact one, but the last one in orbit we had in 1990. And here in the slide before, Chiron started in Cap Capricorn, Uranus was in Cancer, and at the end, it's uh, they, they skipped, they, they switched the position. So now we have the Chiron in Cancer, 1990, and Uranus in Capricorn. So 97, uh, uh, 37 years, everybody who was born there, so this is uh, like masses of people have a Chiron-Uranus opposition, and this is amazing. This is the step into the new consciousness, what they all have in their charts, billions of people. And not just, you know, the transits, um, all, not only the, the, the birth charts, but then of course the transits people went through. So if you do give readings or if you study astrology, get into your own chart, get into the charts of people you know and study these um, constellations and always have in mind that the conjunction is the, the starting point 
and then you have the decreasing and the opposition and the decreasing. So check the dates. What did you do then? Uh, like in these years, maybe 64 to 67, or if you like born later, you know, but check the dates of the people you work with or of your own charts or friends and families because it's really amazing and make your list what's happening there what's happening there so really deepen this study because it's really a lot of insights would come out and then after the last um, um uranus opposition you know i put some more um in from the from just the um, cycles i here only put on the list the hard aspects um it's not doesn't mean that they are not powerful. The trine and the sextiles, it must just be too much numbers. And down here we have what's uh, what's here today. So we have the square and we have this sextile, silent but strong. Um, this I just want to skip quite uh, or, or um, go quite quick. These are like the um, emphasized years because because the three of them made a constellation like here in the T-square from 1951 to 53. And then it's again, um, very important what you see in, uh, in society, what development we have been there uh, after the war, very interesting processes here. And then 64, 67, again, the three of them, the, the uh, very well-known time as, um, as the beginning of the new age even then called and the revolution, sexual revolution, and all kinds of um, difficult but very um, so new social revolutions what started there. And then we have the year 64 to 67. And actually, and this move, this T-square moved then to, to other signs. And here, Ure uh, Chiron was uh, first time discovered. So from here on, he, he, this his collective um, impact on us was even bigger. But of course, it has been there, there much stronger. And if you read charts um, from these generations born with Chiron, it's very, very strong. Um, and then we have the years 1986 to 1988. Again, um, all the three of them. Um, and this is amazing. Um, topic to study and to get to know your, yourself better. So this is just a repetition of what they're doing now. So now we have this decreasing square and the decreasing sextile in parallel, like in a whole year being in the parallel uh, um, orbit and function. So this is very, very strong healing process. Um, I think it's, I want to repeat this, to be aware that in a mass co consciousness, this Uranian Chiron opposition is present. And this gives us really this generations, many generations of this varia spirit. Because Chiron itself has a varia spirit. He works with an uh, with a, with a arrow and a bow. And, let me give this little side note because, um, and I always love to say this, we have to be aware that mythology and astrology was made by men for men. It's not about blaming or, or you know, pushing your way. It's just being aware of it because this has been the patriarchy. We are we are coming out. So this is what archetypes have been written and talked about. Of course, there is a deeper truth in these archetypes, but women would have told different stories by our nature or by, by their nature. So, and this is what it's wakening up to, is the feminine power in mankind, in men and women, you know, to, to get a more balance of our um, of our more um, irrational side, and this is exactly the same step against towards Uranian, Neptunian, and Plutonian energies, because they're all 
more irrational and more less you can you can less control them which is um, very much known in our feminine psyche these processes so um, especially if you are aware that you are a healer a conscious light worker or a, um, you know aware of soul aspects of yourself then this Chiron process even hits you more because if you are aware of your wounds they hurt you even more and this is your uh, your bravery your your being um, brave to be incarnated in this time and this is a privilege to be in this deepest revolution we are in in this certain moment of time so give up resistance in this process really acceptance and this doesn't mean giving up give up resistance at this point doesn't mean don't fight for your rights don't um don't be active for society um um gerechtigkeit um social justice or anything anything like this giving up doesn't mean uh, or acceptance radical acceptance doesn't mean stay on your sofa it's not what i'm talking about you know it's really taking your light and do what your life tells you what to do but this is not for all of us it's not a time for for um giving up but more for giving in so and now we have one of these various here christina <laughs> um thank you so much to open up your chart this is uh, brave enough uh, to talk about chiron because if we talk about chiron with a client or a person it's it's always opening up the field and um be before i want to ask you uh, maybe some things because to read the chart is always you have to ask the person um who am i that i know i would like just like to summarize like maybe the um, different uh, the important things here so as we can see she Christina is a um, Scorpio with a Scorpio sun and then we have the ascendant and the ruler the Venus is again in Scorpio and again in the sixth house and we have Pluto and um, Mercury too in the sixth house so this is quite a deep topic here and um, and as evolutionary astrologers, we of course check the nodes, uh, all, all, all astrologers do. Uh, so we have the node here in Libra. The ruler again brings us to Venus. And we have the, no the north node in, uh, in Aries in the 11th house. And this brings us to Mars, which is ruled by Venus in Libra. So this is a topic we have to talk about. And then of course, if we check the sun, we always check the moon as well, because the old and the past and the evolutionary astrology, it's very important to, you know, to what's the, the habits, the, the way of the little resistance is the moon. And then, you know, the, your hero task and your really journey is your, is your sun power, the spirit power. And then, because of the topic of today, we check, and this is the evolutionary astrology by its core to do the step from the personal structure to the higher structure. We check the, the, the Saturn, and um, which is here, and Uranus, which is conjunct Saturn. So she is born in this year where we have the three of them together. Um, not no wondering why you. Uh, got here as a volunteer <laughs> and the opposition to Chiron and then the opposition to Chiron um, is very close to the moon it's less than one orb so this is quite strong and but we cannot separate this whole stellium I don't know you have this word in English stellium yeah. from um, the moon because it goes on here with Neptune and um, we cannot separate this whole constellation and um, so what is very important is the fifth house because of this south node, but then the ruler of the north node is here. Of course, the sixth house and seventh and eight, 
you know, this is what we maybe emphasize, emphasize on, um, on the questions, how to understand the chart here. And then of course the second house, which is the Venus house again. Mm. So Christina, maybe you, you just give us a short hint. Uh, who are you and what are you doing? And um, uh, what is your profession? <laughs> yes. So um, to start off, um, hello everyone. My name is Christina and um, as a profession, I love to help people. I love to help people heal. I'm also an administrative assistant. Uh, so, you know, definitely helping people is the main job. <laughs> and um, I'm a mother and I'm 33 years old. And, um, you know, the mother theme is huge in my life. So I, uh, you know, I don't know what questions you may have or how deep you want to go. As you can see, the chart is pretty yeah. deep. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And and this is, I mean, if you if you have a chart where you have Saturn, Uranus, and Chiron in an aspect, and to to really um, uh, give them give it a meaning, it's like mind blowing. Yeah. You know, of course, then you have to be aware what Saturn he is a ruler of a house, and Uranus is a ruler of a house, and you know what houses they are standing in, and this is such a complex constellation that to give it a clear and short meaning is not possible and especially not if a personal planet is involved which here is the moon so um, you said the word um, yourself it's quite intense it's deep and and especially then because the moon is in the eighth house the emotional structures are are deep they are difficult to understand they are obsessive, but they're still always yearning for transformation and for crisis, you know, and um, and this keeps this repeats here with all the Scorpio um, Virgo energy Virgo because it's the sixth house. Mm -hmm. So this yearning for perfection to do the things the right way and not to do it halfway but the right way and um, gives us a very strong power, very strong, yeah, very strong uh, women power. And you really have like to, to, to fight for what you want and what you go for. And you, you are this, this giver here with all this Virgo six house Scorpio energy. But of course the letting go <laughs> Uh, of this yearning for perfection is the is the deepest. Mm -hmm. um, so, what I think, if you have the moon in in Sagittarius and this Saturn Uranus conjunction, and Saturn is the ruler of the ninth house, so this you know this combination of um, giving advice and working as a healer, therapist, teacher. And, and you're still young at age, you know, giving your knowledge to other people. This is a, this is a, um, uh, a talent you have, you know, or, or a deep, deep, not only a yearning, but a master tool you have to advise people and, and to listen to them and to give them good hints about their emotions, although your own emotions are so trapped and this is the wound yeah. of this um, of this constellation because with the cons this constellation a person should seek for security you know this seek for um, perfection is like I want to be secure mm -hmm. I want to make everything right so my wound is not seen or my imperfection is not seen I, I, ha I, I have it under control but life shows you, you know, all the, you know, again and again that you don't, Correct. and that yourself, um, yes, are this intense and deep emotional and kind of even um, weird person inside. 
And this is your birthright. Yeah. This is your absolute birthright. It's, it doesn't say be perfect. It says, let go of being perfect. And this is, um, I want to emphasize this with the nodes because the ruler of the old node of the south node is the Venus in Scorpio in Virgo, in the Virgo house in the sixth house. And the, the, um, the ruler of her, you know, of the Dharma is, the, is, is in the fifth house. So, and this is like, be the, be the one you are, even if it's raw, even if it's um, unsecure, mm -hmm. even if it's playful or not wise, whatever it is, because Mars there, especially in Libra is not consistent. Mm -hmm. It's changing and it's something like there and it's something, maybe something too loud, maybe something too fast, maybe something too slow maybe something too silent it's it's changing yeah. and um and it's often very emotional <laughs> yes <laughs> and, and that's the way it should be it should not be perfect yeah it's perfect in its um in its playfulness. Yeah. Very accurate. So it doesn't make sense. What 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 are you maybe you want to share something? Yes, absolutely. Um I you you your interpretation was um refreshing. I don't usually hear that interpretation. And um I have to say the multifaceted um approach, especially with understanding Chiron's journey through the signs and even from 1950 to now, and being able to pinpoint Chiron to Saturn and Uranus and being able to display that um, with the personal planet. I mean, it was great. I do want to add um, that my whole life um, is based on the death of my mother. Mm -hmm. And so when you go to the eighth house moon, you, ex you know, my mother passed away when she was five months old. And so that's like my deepest wound. My whole life is based on that. And so finding that nurturing, um, allowing myself because, you know, my security, my spiritual soul security was ripped away so young. I've always had to fight and figure out, um, where is my security? What, how do I sustain myself in this world? And so um, I've come to a point in my life where I'm like, I'm capable, you know, spirit is with me and uh, perfection doesn't exist. <laughs> yes, and like to, to let this mother mm -hmm. still die. I mean, life will not stop you at this point. No, not at all. So whatever, you know, presents then, life will always get you to this point to again, let her go, to again, be this naked, unsecure baby, mm -hmm. not being able to nurture itself. Correct. This is really the deepest wound because I, I mean, this is what I meant a little bit with this, emperor in front of the mirror because this is what we are we are we are so we are nothing just this naked body not being able to really take care of ourselves if you know the, the storm comes the virus comes whatever comes the mother dies yes um i would like to to emphasize one more thing, what I what I th see here, and these are these like really gifted, different talented talents. It's I think it's a huge variation of talents you have and you could share, and to be creative and really play with them, not to um, maybe even if you move if you move further more to come from this giver to a receiver 
That's a big one. <laughs> That's a big one. I, absolutely. I'm such a giver because I've, uh, um, so I was adopted and she became, uh, my mother was like mommy dearest. So it was that moon Saturn um, influence and I wasn't given much in my childhood. So as an adult, I just, I, mm -hmm. I give in hoping to receive. I'm yes. always a giver. And so receiving has been yes. a big issue. Um, what is a very strong power is this creative power. First, you bring it in this life because you have the south node there in the fifth house. So it's really a gift you already have. Then you have the Mars there as a ruler of your north node. And, and uh, if, we, if we check the north node, of course we have to check areas too. And um, we have here the, the Jupiter in Aries in the 12th house. And actually we have the um, Aries in, this, on, in Aries too, which is making a quite exact square, a uh, trine to Saturn. Mm -hmm. And Uranus, uh, sorry, Jupiter trines exact to Uranus. It's a zero orbit. And the trine um, is an increasing trine. So it's Leo quality, which is the fifth house energy again. Yes. And a, a, an artist, a creator, it doesn't, it doesn't mean, it's not about painting or sculpturing, you know, but an artist is receiving. Mm -hmm. Um, it's channeling what is giving to him as ideas or a joyful and playful life. So um, I, I, you know, with what you just said, I have to say, I, I did mention I'm a mother now. So that brought reflections of that wound, right? And I, um, what, what I've learned is Chiron um, always brings up that repetition of whatever happened in your childhood that may have caused that wounding up when you're an adult. And um, I, I had to repeat that and learn and actually prevail. And fun, funny, non-coincidence, but my daughter is a Leo, mm -hmm. little Aries moon in the fifth house. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yes. There it is. I mean, that's how powerful the universe is. Yes, and the child is in, in the fifth house. Yeah. But I, I want to, um, um, because you said this wound of our childhood, they are very connected to the Saturn structures too, the loss, you know, and, mm -hmm. and the Chiron wound is like something what hits us because we are, we are innocent. There's, mm. you, you have no parents, you have no karma, you cannot, you know, there is no system to blame for. Mm -hmm. The Chiron wound hits us just because we're human, like shit happens. Yeah. yeah. And if, because we have no explanation, like we, we, you know, we have, then you go through the process with your mother again and again and again, and you do this and you do this and you, you it's getting better. You know, you, you're now capable of doing this and this and this, but this is the Saturn maturing. Mm -hmm. But the Chiron keeps it wounded and not because it wants to um, negger, it, it doesn't want to bother you, it wants to heal you to get to accept your fate, to yes. accept the destiny and in this accepting getting free and not to liberate from your destiny, not to step, you know, oh, now I'm done with everything. Now I'm really, you know, this mother topic doesn't bother me anymore. I'm done with it. Yeah. This is the dissociation from Uranian. If we, uh, it's a Uranian dissociation, you know, I'm free. If we have this immature Saturn or this, you know, still working, sure. we still have to work. And it takes a lifetime. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I did have my daughter before my Saturn return. Mm -hmm. that's when it was really dark for me and depression and kind of you mm -hmm. know the, the the chiron wound popped open and slapped me in the face 
I had been running away, like you were saying, that immature reaction, disassociation, that was my whole life with a Sagittarius moon is like, let me run away from this. Um, <laughs> and, it, and I realized after my Saturn return that no, you know, I'm capable, I have to face this. And I did, and, and I'm a better mother now than I could have ever imagined. Yes. You know, so now I, I, I look at my daughter and I go, okay, you know, um, man, sometimes I see her and I see her like having these wonderful experiences I never had, which is that Chiron wound. And I go, you know what? Yes, that's there. I see you. But I'm so happy that she gets to have that, that I get to experience that through her. And, um, you know, the Chiron wound will always be there. But being able to, like you said, face it head on, integrate it and accept it and learn how to harness that pain and, and suffering that may have came through your innocence and inability to, you know, truly control that uh, is the power, yes. is the strength. Yes. Yeah. And, and this, I mean, this, this, that you have the child and so this, for this, this joy and the playfulness, and this will go on. So this will really be a source of liberation. And this is not um, in here, but your, your um, Lilith is in Leo too, and makes a square to the sun. Yes. So this is very strong too, in this creative. So yeah, really create, create creativity <laughs> and play and receive this and the, because and the, the Jupiter is in the 12th house. So this again is this receiving and just be open for this hidden talents, you know, and, and um, hidden joy. And, and, and there, I think lots of luck that will then turn more and more on in this life, except in the process. Yeah, yeah. Regarding creativity, I do want to mention, I write, I paint, I draw. I do all of oh, those. Wow. Yeah, and I, you know, wow. I definitely yeah. want to write a book. I want to do things like that. So yeah, no, absolutely. Um, creativity is is a source of happiness. Yes, and and it it, it is a, um, your birthright again to change, mm -hmm. because the Chiron is in Gemini, and it's not only like this one talent, and it's a little bit of this, little bit of this. Mm -hmm. Maybe your journey uh, your your search for perfection like oh no i have to do it real but good no just play with it do it for the fun out of it okay not for the result <laughs> i like that <laughs> <laughs> because you enjoyed this being in the here and the now and then there was the joy and this is like the main goal you came for yes yeah okay so let me um, thank you so much thank you. Uh, for your sharing and for your openness in these things and, and very good process this year. You have strong transits, but this would get us too far. Mm -hmm. And I would maybe um, like to, oops, like to, to close again with this picture of the, of the magical drink uh, we all have this year. And um, Christina mentioned the word suffering and the, the really secret of the pain of Chiron, which is a deep wound and not nice, nice feeling, um, is, as we said, the acceptance. And this will stop suffering because if you suffer or if you have pain and put resistance on the pain, then you suffer. But if you have pain and acceptance, it stays pain. And this brings you to liberation. And this is such a deep process we have to um, go on again and again. I mentioned before, like if you trust to people your wound, um, then it can heal. But if you, if something happens, what really, you know, um, hurts you, then you even have more chance to heal if you don't resist. Because as soon as you resist, we, we keep up in the, in the rings of Saturn and we suffer and we, you know, we dwell on it and we end up in our own soap. 
opera, but we can really um, use this function to step into a higher consciousness. And this, this um, happening of, of the last year and the upcoming year, the year we're already in, is this really this happening is meant for you as a key to your higher consciousness and to your healing. So it's really, you are asked to walk this step in empty space again and again, the letting go and to have all this empathy and compassion for all of us around because we're all in the same boat. And Chiron teaches us bravery and courage and clarity and empathy and humility. So um, so do the step in this unknown and never underestimate the sextile. It's very strong, but silent. Um, Linda, this is it for me. I don't know whether we should end here or what is your plan? I don't know the time either. Oh, I think we have, it's time to end. So, um, okay. Linda, Nicole, thank you. Thank you very much for an excellent meeting. And Christina, thank you too. And would all our attendees please unmute and thank Nicole Ines Hamish. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Thank you both. What Excellent. A, a wonderful, wonderful talk. Thank you. Okay, see you Thank all. Thank you so much. Thank you for your trust. And we'll see us again. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.